Good afternoon, everyone. I uh, wanted to put some thoughts out there for you, or, you know, just to satisfy my own self, to show that I did share something in this life with people about gun control. You know, it seems like every time we have one of those things come up, like what happened up in Oregon, and now I think down in Texas somewhere, the, the immediate response is we have to have gun control. Now, that's basically a socialist tenet put out to make people think that we should somehow change, alter, amend, or cancel the Second Amendment, which, you know, is a bad idea from the very beginning because the Second Amendment keeps you from having the government overrun you. I mean, that's what happens, you know. We don't need a Lenin. How would Lenin have taken over Russia if every Russian had a gun? You know? So anyway, put that socialist idealism on the shelf. It's not something we here in America are even going to even consider. Uh, it's just a shame that the current Democratic nominees, as well as the current establishment in the White House, think that's the answer. It's an absolute answer. I don't really think that is true. and I really don't think... Uh, background checks would suffice to cover everything. It's really kind of hard to get something from somebody on a piece of paper and say, okay, this guy's good to go. We've done a background check on him. Yeah, well, how really thorough was that? And I think the big thing is, so far it seems like most of the people who do these things are young, you know, and some of them aren't even old enough to own a gun, like that kid in Washington. Um, I think he was 20. I think 21 was the age. So, regardless of all that, you know, I think the reason <clears throat> we have such a criminal output in this country is that we're very weak when it comes to clamping down on criminals. If you look at you know, the criminal justice system here in America, we have a thing called death penalty. And very few states actually use it. You know, Texas will, some of the others will. But very few states use the death penalty as a deterrent towards murdering people. You know, if you have intentionally killed someone, in my opinion, you do not deserve to live on the face of this earth. You need to be removed, as far as I'm concerned. I would feel satisfaction if somebody killed somebody in my family. The only other satisfaction I would get is if they, you know, put him in jail and he got an early parole, and then I could go take his ass out, which I would do if somebody did it to my family. Matter of fact, I would do my best to say the police didn't, do the arrest properly, would have to release him. That way I could take care of him even quicker. But anyway, that's another side issue altogether. That's another issue altogether. Just forget about that for now. When you parole people and you give uh, criminals who intentionally kill someone life imprisonment, and they say there's no possibility of parole, but there are some that get out there and well, since it's second degree murder, girls will for parole after 25 years. You know, that's all BS. I think they should get rid of all levels of murder. Murder is murder. Forget the levels. And we're talking about intentional murder. We're not talking about somebody being in a fight in a bar somewhere, getting his ass hit and falling back and, you know, maybe hitting his neck on something and, you know, just... You know, kill me like that. That's not that's not an intentional death. That's just, you know, we have a term for that. And that's called manslaughter. I agree with that. There should be a separation between intentional murder and accidental murder. Um, so I, I agree with that. Uh, so let's just keep it on focus on the intentional murders. If you knew you were going to be killed and let's stop right there for a second. Let's just put it this way. You uh, 
they're going to be killed quickly. You know, these appeal processes where we have people living on death row for 10 years before they're finally put to death. You know, in my opinion, death row needs to disappear. You should have a holding cage with a bench on it. Here's where you're going to be for the next week or so, and then we're going to take you out and take care of you. You know? That parolee system that we got, as well as the uh, appeal system for the courts. If you got a guy dead to rights, you know, make that appeal process fast. I don't know how many appeals they get. It might be three, something like that. You know, the next day, you, you know, when that gavel bangs and you play a set and you say, tomorrow you're going to die, that means you got to get that first appeal in right away. Once that's heard, okay, and it's denied, then boom, you schedule them for the day after. Then they got to get that appeal done even quicker. In other words, you expedient the process. You make it a faster thing so that, you know, within a month, that guy's gone. We as people don't need to be keeping people alive in prison who've murdered people. They don't give a crap about somebody else's life. Why should we care about theirs? So you want gun control in this country? Especially when it comes to the murder rate? You get that death penalty and you get that appeal process to be an expedient thing in his life. I think you would see a lot less murder in this country. People just devalue life. I, I don't know why. But for those who do, then we should say, well, we devalue yours. And we should take them and put them in, you know, put them to death that much quicker. The thing that I don't understand about the death penalty is the methodology that people use. You know, there's nothing... Worse than hearing people say, well, we can't get the drugs, the proper mixture together because one of the drug companies decided they don't want to sell us the drug because we use it to kill people. You know, have you ever heard of carbon monoxide? Instead of worrying about, you know, cocktails for people, you know, let's get rid of the attachments gas chambers have to the Nazi stigmatism, if you will. And let's put that thing back into practice. All you got to do then is fill, you know, put a little valve at the top, shh, suck the oxygen out, shh, turn another valve down at the bottom, start filling it with carbon monoxide. You know, the guy's just going to go to sleep and expire. I mean, that was the uh, preferred method of suicide for old people who found out they had terminal illnesses. Man found in garage, dead, due to leaving his automobile on and all the doors closed. No, that wasn't a suicide. That was just an accidental death. Okay, you get the picture. <laughs> you know, we need to do something to, you know, I agree we do need gun control. But it's not controlling the guns. Is controlling the people after they've done something with a gun. Because a gun is nothing more than a tool. That's all it is. If it lays out on your coffee table for 50 years and never gets touched, then it's just a tool that laid on your coffee table for 50 years and never got touched. But if you're going to take it and point at somebody and pull the trigger, you need to be tried, convicted, and put to death. No more life sentences. They all need to disappear. If we weren't so lenient as a society, our murder rate would drop fairly quickly. Because you're going to be thinking really hard about killing somebody if you knew within the month after you were tried and found guilty that you were going to be gone too. At least well, that's the way my thinking is. Yours may be differently. But that's what a dialogue is all about. That's what opinions are all about. Everybody has their own. You know, I'm throwing mine out there just for, you know, grins and giggles. You take it for what you will. But to me, the biggest, the best methodology for gun control is to exterminate the people 
who perpetuate these crimes and get them off the face of the earth. That's up to you to think about it for yourself. I'll give you my two cents. Have a good day.